I don't know how much everyone here knows about street art and graffiti, but I kind of make it my business to know a lot about it. So what most people kind of associate with graffiti and street art is tags. Now, these are tags by Vito and Bird, and they're both local painters. So tags are sort of just one line, quick things that they probably took like 10 seconds to do each one of those, between 10 and 20 seconds. So this is Bird, and they did, these are tags. Now these, this is a, a hollow throw, so that means like a one line throw, so it's like a bit, just a single, or not necessarily one line, but it's one color. So that might have taken him a minute to do. So this is Antidote, which is another local graffiti writer. How do you know what their names are? Uh, I've, I just pay attention to them, and they kind of write the same thing, and you can start to notice styles within it. So within that, there's like, this is Dote, so it says it's like D-O, and that's a T, and that's an E. So it's just they stylized, they hyper stylized their letters. So I just, it, once you look at it a lot, you start noticing how they write. And so, with, see, with the dope there too, with that hollow throw, it says ABC, and that ABC means that's the crew he writes with. So the crew is like the people who you write with who also write their names, and then they'll sign like ABC or something beside it, which means it's like you're talking about like your group of friends. So that's dope, so that's, that's relatively new. So that was out last week. And these are hand styles. So hand styles is like similar to tags, or they're both interchangeable. So these are done with markers, and they're just sort of done quickly on doors around town. You'll see those all over the place. And see, there's semi and there's C1, and both of them signed. Both of them are under RC. So RC is another group. And the Telegram did an article like about a month ago about graffiti, and they talked with these guys, semi and C1. So, See, there's, there's a, there, there, now this is a throw. See this, how it's sort of like a two color piece? So that big RC, and it's by Bird. You can see right there. Like, in the, within that big C, so that's a tag that says Bird. So that's, he's tagging it, RC, and then he writes his own name, Bird. And then the other one on the side is Rome. So that's like, this is the stuff that the most people consider graffiti. So it's a problem, it's in St. John's. It's for small businesses, it can be a problem. I enjoy seeing it, a lot of people don't enjoy seeing it. I'm not going to make you make that judgment call. Um, so this is another throw by Pope. He, get, he again is in uh, RC. So this, a throw, the idea of a throw is sort of something quick and simple. One color, maybe two letters, they don't write their whole name. So one, a lot of the time they'll also tag beside it and write their whole name. Uh, this is Revert, he is an NTC, he's a different group of guys, there's not a lot of them around anymore. Mostly these days, you're gonna see an RC everywhere, and that's, it's a group of, they're the most active. One of the things with graffiti in, in general is people get in it and then they get out, and people don't last along a lot of the time. So this is Semi, he's in our, uh, RC. This is C1, these are sort of hollow throws, they're just like simple bubble letters. And the idea here is he wants to make it look the same every time. So like how his style, to show he's good, is sort of, he's proving to everyone else in the community that he can recreate the same kind of stamp over and over and over and over and over, and over town. Uh, this is Semi again. Slip, uh, RC. And this is Semi. So you're kind of noticing that there's a lot of Semi and other things, but that's because right now in St. John's, they're kind of all over. If you start looking for it in up, up above buildings on the side, on mailboxes, you're going to start seeing their names everywhere. So the reason why you see kind of these simple, quick things all over the place is because it, it is simple. It's quick. It takes them a minute, two minutes, five minutes to do. Not very long. Enough to do at five o'clock in the morning that they can spray it and, they get, and then they're gone. This is, takes a little bit longer. This is Reaper. That's, again, another simple throw. But, um, in town, there's also two legal walls. So legal walls, uh, you can go and paint however long. So this is Bower. He's an SY. So he's a little bit older than some of the other guys. But his, it's a little bit more complicated. Now, this would probably take him an hour or 20 minutes to do. So the reason why you don't see a lot of pieces like nice-looking lettering around town is because it takes him long. So this is Swass. He's another older writer. Um, and one of the challenges with people, like, they want to write their names everywhere. They want to contribute. They want to, like, put their names all over the place. They want to show people what they can do. And they would do things like this more often, more stylized graphic letters, but the thing is they don't have space. That's one of the issues within a city like this, is there's not a lot of space. So if you go to this, there's another picture from that same free wall. 
Um, if you go there every week or two, there's going to be new big pieces like this almost always. Uh, so this is Game and Acer, and they're both in SYS and RC. This is NATO. Um, this is Remio. Now Remio is actually sort of a local superstar. He started in St. John's when he was in high school, and now he has painted in every major city in the world. He's paintings in Berlin, he's paintings in Vancouver, he's paintings in Montreal, New York, in California. He's kind of everywhere. So right now, like it's he's at, he's really big in graffiti in the graffiti world. Remio from St. John's started here. Uh, is, he has a few pieces around. Now the reason why this piece is kind of deteriorated is not because people don't want to like mostly like if you go some of these spots, they all look fresh because they're painted over all the time. Now there's a little bit of an etiquette in the graffiti world. Whereas Remio is old and he's well known and people want to leave his stuff up. So that's been there since about probably 2006 and no one in the community would probably paint over that. It's sort of a, a note that you would never want to do that. He only has, that's like, he has one or two pieces left in town that haven't been painted over. And so that's one of the few. And so see, this is Remio, he, that's a Remio tag. He's collaborating with a group called Osgemios and they're from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And that character there has a little squiggly face, smiley face on the back. It looks like an R. And that's a Remio R, sort of his throw that he's famous for. And this is, again, this is in LA. But he started here, so it's sort of interesting. This, there's, this is the images from another free wall. So this is a free wall by Choices for Youth. And there's a space there for about five or six pieces. It's not a huge wall, but it's, again, people are able to take more time with their work and make their pieces look better. So if you're gonna have time, go check out the Choices for Youth wall. Right now, I wouldn't go check it out because there's also a little bit of uh, agitation between a few writers in town and they keep scrawling over and like writing terrible things on each other's pieces. And this is C1. Uh, this is Tekker. He's sort of not a uh, writer. He more does kick characters and figures. This is, was a uh, free wall. So this is an example I just wanted to pull up because when you have a free wall, you're gonna get nice looking pieces like this and these all the time if you enable people to paint it. It's gonna, the paint won't flake off, it's gonna keep the wall preserved. But then you have periods where people all of a sudden decide they don't want to have a free wall anymore. So they let the wall decay and it falls apart. And this particular wall was kind of, it was the first official street wall in St. John's, but then when they decided it wasn't a free wall, they didn't tell anyone, so then there were people painting on it and they were getting arrested, and then they, uh, people weren't very happy with that situation. So this brings me to my project. So I am kind of, I like graffiti letters, and but a lot of the stuff you see in St. John's, it's not where you're gonna see in Montreal or in big cities, so a lot of the stuff here is more based on 1970s letters from Bro like Brooklyn, from New York. So what I wanted to do in St. John's is bring different kind of work into St. John's, it's more representative of like what's happening now in the world. So this is the poster that we did up for the project. So what I did was I invited all these wheat pasters from around the world to send me paste. So what a wheat paste is, is basically a piece of paper with a painting on it or a drawing or a print or something and then you basically just glue it to the wall. And it enables people to mail you pieces so the physical artist doesn't have to be here, they can send you work and then you can have someone put it up. So, there's maps over there uh, on that back wall uh, of all the locations. So part of my project was I wanted people to get out of the gallery as well and go experience uh, what's happening outside the street. So this is a piece by Nanook, and he's from uh, Baltimore. He's from Baltimore, Maryland. So uh, this is, um, where is that? It's between Duckworth and Water Street, right by the hockey rink. His process is he actually does his hand painted. He's like he's massive hand painted, eight by that's probably eight feet by ten feet wide. And this is another one by uh, Nunuk. This is uh, over an abandoned forest parking lot, or not parking lot. There's an abandoned like construction lot. This piece is by Almez, and he's from uh, Berlin. He uh, this is like hand painted acrylic. This piece is by Tekar, he's uh, a local, he's from here. Uh, he's one, of them. him and uh, another guy named Anam put up a bunch of this stuff here for me. This piece is a print by uh, an artist called Willow, and he's from Brooklyn. 
that's in a uh, dirty old door by the ship. Mm -hmm. This piece is by Over Under, and he's from, or he's currently based out of Reno in Nevada. This is another piece by uh, Over Under, and that again is by in that abandoned Ford slot uh, just down the road here. This piece is by uh, Circle Face, and she is from Portland, Oregon. Uh, this piece is by Anom, so he's local, he's from Newfoundland. So if, if you see, if you, there's coyotes all over town now, there's a few coyotes, yeah. if you look around, so he's responsible for that. So this is uh, behind the hockey rink, uh, along the back wall. If you can kind of squint, you can kind of see it. Uh, that's Livingston Street right behind there. Uh, this guy's name is Skaten, and he is, uh, He's from Amsterdam, so I wanted to include like contemporary artists, like people who are painters. But along with that, I wanted to have like the more graph edge guys post like images. Like a lot of people, I've had kind of mixed reactions. I know people who are in the art world and they're like, I don't really like this guy's world work. But like the guys who are in this graffiti, they're all pretty young and they're ex really excited. They were like really into it. So I wanted to have to show them that they don't have to spray on buildings necessarily. That there is that option of uh, weed pasting. So. I know one of the things I, I do in St. John's is I want to bring mur more murals into St. John's. So this is a piece by April Norman and Derek Holmes, and they have beautiful murals all over town, but they're like all over the town, and there's a bunch of them. So I, I like these kind of pieces, but I, part of what's in St. John's is I think there's a lot more vibrancy that we can kind of get more people other than those two artists to do all these public works. Sort of like this is a commission mural on the old Johnny Booth building by the NTC crew. So it's, these are more, this is like, they were paid to do this. They were asked by Dave Hopley and Living Planet and Eric Johnny Ruth to do this. So that was done a few years ago. So one thing about St. John's is uh, within like the murals that you look around, a lot of them are falling apart, which makes it conducive to paint new murals over top of them. So one of the problems you run into that is with the city, it takes a long time to get anything going. So if there was a regular program where you can get the youth to paint these areas, and repaint them with like big pieces and stuff, I think it would really uh, contribute to the community. Like, I don't know, this mural's been there for, I had not from St. John's, I'm not from Newfoundland. I'm from Nova Scotia, but this mural's been there since I can remember. I, I, someone told me it's over five years old, but they just sort of fall apart over time. And I think what I would like to do next after these pastes is to start commissioning big pieces around town. So start bringing artists in, start bringing artists in to paint on walls in St. John's, on abandoned buildings, on get permission from landowners and bring in contemporary work other than uh, the work of like nuclear, local, using local artists as well as international artists. So this is Nunuk again, uh, but this is part of a project that I kind of am, want to uh, emulate. It's called uh, Open Walls Baltimore. So Baltimore, they had 25 artists from around the world come in and paint big murals on vacant lot buildings or permission from businesses, permission from private landowners and on public property. Uh, they got permission for all of it and they did these massive beautiful pieces. So this piece is by Intersny Kadsky and they're from Ukraine. They're from Kiev. So this again is in Baltimore. Uh, this piece is by Momo, and they're from New Orleans, part of the Open Walls uh, Baltimore project. Uh, this piece is by Ever, and they're from Sao Paulo, and this is again part of that same uh, Open Walls Baltimore project. Uh, this piece is by Lebrona, and on the right, and then Other on the left, and both of those guys are from Montreal. So they're sort of like, uh, Montreal has probably the biggest street art graffiti scene in Canada, one of them. Toronto is up there, but Montreal, the artists get around a lot more. Uh, this piece is by Jazz, and he is from, oh, he's from uh, Sao Paulo as well. Uh, and almost this summer with Eastern Edge for the Art Marathon, I was in the talks with this artist, and his name is Roa. He's from uh, Ghent in Belgium. So. He wanted to come here, I wanted him to come here, but he couldn't because he has a solo show at like the MoMA or something in September, so he, he couldn't come, unfortunately. But we're gonna, he said, to keep in contact, and I would like, in, ideally, if I have space and time next year, I would like to bring artists like him and these other artists in. So, that's it, that's the presentation. Yeah.